After an unforgettable race to open up the season two weeks ago, we come here to round number two. It is the Carl's Koga Self Storage 400 coming to you live from Kansas Speedway in Kansas City, Kansas. Good evening, everybody. My name is Frank Marchese. Thank you very much for making us a part of your evening alongside me, my broadcast partner, Tony Trapasso. Again, just two of us here this week. Uh, Tony, an unforgettable finish last uh, last time out in the cup cars at Daytona. Four wide finish, the top four all finishing inside of one one hundredth of a second of each other. It is going to be another great race here today at Kansas. It absolutely is, and you know it, the the biggest thing to the biggest takeaway uh, from that opening race is surprise. Swedes know how to run an oval. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, this is going to be a, a good one. We've been watching qualif or the, the hot lap session. They're in the qualifying session right now. But, uh, you know, this is, this is going to be one of those races that it, it's going to really test the drivers early um, because Kansas is a completely different animal than Daytona was. And if you look at the track map, this is not symmetrical in the least. You know, it is a difficult little racetrack as we see uh, the winner at Daytona, Linus Brostrom, crossing the line on his second lap. And from the looks of it, he will go to the top. Yes, he will. A 31-30, wow. a great time for the number 71. Most of the drivers have already completed their qualifying time. Uh, Daniel Holmer crossing to complete his second lap right now in the number 79. And Homer will jump up to third. A very good time for that car. Jonas Skoglund coming out on track for his first lap. And Daniel Solo in the 13 running his first lap right now. 44 drivers going to be qualifying here for this race. The top 20 will make it to the main race. There will be a heat race after this where the driver who finishes in last will not participate in tonight's race. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we do have to send someone home, but there's only enough pit stalls for you know, so many drivers and nobody wants to see us doubling up. Jonas Skoglund uh, working his first lap. Daniel Solo gets himself into that 20th position, which is 37 seconds to go here in this qualifying session. Both of these drivers will be able to get their laps in. Uh, Skoglund probably won't get a second in. Solo better on his second lap than on his first. He will jump up to 18. So Jonas Force in the 78 is the driver in the cutoff spot. Skoglund's first time was good enough to put him 40th, and Tony, unfortunately, he will not get to finish this lap. He will not, um, and you can blame connection issues on that one. As, uh, yeah, definitely not a happy camper right now, as he's got to run. Not only does he have to run the heat, he's got to start deep in the heat. Yep, he absolutely does. And let's take a look at the starting grid for said heat. Kim Nyholm will start on pole by qualifying in the 21st position. Uh, Connie Lundell will start to the outside of row number one. Philip Bjork and Hal Fleety Johansson will make up row number two. Patrick Pfeffer and Robert Erickson will sit in row three. I was going over that name multiple times. Martin Lysjanik? If I remember correct, no, I don't think that was right. Uh, in row four with Bjorn Brostrom, Eric Lundberg and Ricard Allard will make up row number five here for the heat race. Row six goes to Robert Lundgren and Simon Green. Hyukin Huet and Kenneth Tier will make up row seven. Uh, Martin Gadalakis and Pontus Nilsson will make up row number eight. Stephen Wong and Krister Hornbeck will make up row number nine, Marcus Stiller and Jonas Skoglund in row 10, Daniel Bloomquist and Bat Erdin Genbat in row number 11. Row 13 goes to Philip Carlin and Christian Gantz will round out the field here in this heat race. 
so Tony got through the names for the, <laughs> the best quite well. I, I might say <laughs> you, you're hired. I would I would hope so. Uh, it'll <laughs> of course it will get better uh, as the season goes on. But Tony, uh, uh, this ten lap heat race that is before us again. Just the driver who finishes in last will not be uh, will not be participating in the race. Yeah, uh, you know, you hate to see it any t- anytime we come to, you know, a facility that usually gives us good racing, but you got to do what you got to do, and with only so many pit stalls available, somebody's going home. So, you know, I, I think this is a more fair way to do it than just go off of qualifying, simply because... Some guys, it takes them a lap or two to get the car under them, uh, you know, to fit their driving style, to fit their setup, and so on. Um, you know, so a heat race scenario where you've got 10 laps to get it done as opposed to one and done or two and done. And it might seeing things, or is that a BMW on track? I, you know what, I noticed that as well. Uh, we'll get to that <laughs> Uh, in just a moment, but we are rounding turn number four. Yep, there's the 116. Okay, uh, the then. 16, pardon me. In uh, the BMW M3 Cup car, that's another first. As we come off of turn number four, getting set to get this heat race underway, Kim Nyholm will lead them off into the Geico restart zone. Green flag is out. We are running here for the heat race. Nylon getting a good getaway as uh, it's Philip York. Under, the- I was going to say Philip York uh, giving some good pressure right now. As you know, I'm recognizing some of these names from some of the other leagues that I get to broadcast. Um, and I got to say, I'm a little surprised at where some of them are starting. A lot of moving and shaking here in the middle of this pack. Again, this will also not just set who uh, who does not participate in this race tonight, but it will also set the starting grid from 21st on back here for tonight's race. So there's there's a little bit more to play for than just don't finish last. Yeah, no, you definitely want to try to get as far forward as you can and, you know, try to make sure that not only do you transfer into the main, you have a good shot at it because this... This can be a very difficult track to pass at. It can be, especially as the tires wear. And looking at the back of the field, there is Christer Hornback right now, who's the last one in some serious trouble. Ganbat in the 54 right now is the last driver uh, that will not make it into the race as we ride on board with Ganbat. With Hornbach to his outside. That right there, at least for the moment, is the transfer spot. Absolutely. His horn back does fall back a little bit. Ganbat making some good headway as he gets by both uh, Green and Gantz. But, yeah, the the battle did, did not... Whoa! Oh, hang on to her. That was Hornback had a big wiggle coming out of turn two. And Kornbach really putting himself, at, that? putting himself at a big disadvantage. Now about a second and a half behind the field. He's got half of this heat race left to catch up. Well, let's hope we don't, for his sake, we want to see that certain colored flag that I don't want to mention at this point in time. <laughs> but for the rest of the field, nobody wants to see it. And they're three wide in front of him, so we might get a shot at that. Yeah, there's a lot of moving and shaking going on. This is side-by-side between Connie Lundell in the 91, Eric Lundberg in the 18 on the outside line. And this is one of the characteristics of this track. With the progressive banking, you can run both on the inside. You can run on the outside. You can run in a lot of different places. But, Tony, we've seen, especially in the most recent updates, you can't hold on to that outside line for too long because you will wear the tires off of it a lot quicker than you would running the bottom. It, it, absolutely. Um, 
and it, it's it's weird to think about it that way, but them's the breaks, as the kids say. Uh, you know, and and it, it's understandable because you're not, uh, you know, because these cars generate so much grip now with the under trays and with the the way the front splitter is set up. Um, you know, you can really honk on it and it, it really just heats the right sides up a little bit quicker than you would want to. Uh, the biggest takeaway, the last time that I was here with a broadcast, uh, it's very easy to get a car tail happy here, especially late in a tire run. Martin Godalakis running right now in the eighth position in his number 76. Looking down the back end of Robert Lundgren, one of the team superior cars. Somebody getting very close, possibly in the wall there. That looks like the 200 of Patrick Pfeffer getting very close to that outside walls. We have two laps to go. And Hornback continues his backslide. It looks like he's going to be, the one, unfortunately, the one to go home as he's now a good two seconds off the tail end of the uh the field, the field here. here. And, and continuing to slide back about two tenths of a second off of what the back of the field was doing the last time around. There is Kim Nyholm. Started on pole for this race after qualifying in the 21st position. And it looks as though that 58 will be starting in that 21st position. Coming out of turn number two, down the back straightaway, a good six tenths of a second on Phil, uh, Philip Bor Bjork, boy, in the 044. And out of turn number four comes Nyholm. And she will win the heat race here at Kansas. You know, I was watching the back, uh, back of the last top part of the top 10. And unfortunately, Patrick Pfeffer got into the wall again. So... That's no bueno, but he does transfer on, um, you know, as we mentioned, the uh, starting grid, we are sending only one home. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this Chris, 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 I can, I can talk. I Christer promise I can talk Hornbeck. today, folks. Hornbeck uh, going to be the only one to, unfortunately, take it to the house early. The uh, sessions are switching up on us, which is why the uh, the overlay is having a bit of a fit right here. So we'll take a look. That is the final result. And again, for uh, the old gents, Krister Hornbeck not transferring into the race. Just 43 drivers will start. And, Tony, we're going to split grid duties here for this race. One, two, three, not it. <laughs> At least for this one. Uh, I will take, of course, as I usually do, I'll take the first half. Linus Brostrom oh, will start yeah, on pole with a one with a 31.300 the winner at daytona will start on pole here for round number two of the season oscar Fredrickson will start outside of the front row daniel homer and sam hammerstedt will make up row number two with andre salander and michael hefletison in row number three jesper erickson and thomas peterson will make up row number four with peter helmbro and Jonas Gunnarsson in row five. Alexander Wegert and Tony Oivinen will make up row number six. Row seven goes to Anton Ehrmann and Robert Erling. Dennis Schrepp and Marcus Stromberg will make up row number eight. Row nine will go to Emily Fagrell and Daniel Solo with row 10 going to Anton Bratberg and Jonas Force. Kim Nihil and Philip Borkin will roll off in row 11, row 12. Sees Martin Lindschick and Eric Lund Lundberg, County Lundrell, and Robert Lundgren uh, rolling off in row 13, row 14. Patrick Pfeffer and Martin Godeladakis, uh, Stefan Wang, uh, and Kenneth Tier in row 15, row 16. Richard Alter and Marcus Stiller, Daniel Bloomquist, and Robert Erickson in row number. I'll tell you, we, got, we got the grid up, and I, 
a longer grid and a very quick uh, grid up for these guys. Tony, take <clears throat> us away for the start of the race. Well, as the field works its way through the 3-4 complex, the Chevy Silverado pace truck getting ready to haul it on off. The only thing is, let's say it's time to wipe the visor into just the five-point harness. Grandma grabs some meatballs because it's time to get it on in Kansas. Race fans, it's showtime! First of 165. Here tonight, and Linus Brostrom working his way out to the front and immediately right down to that inside lane, blocking off the first three drivers. Daniel Homer getting a very good start as compared to Ostrich Fredrick Oscar Fredrickson starting to fall back a little bit, and there's Andre Solander already working up to the outside. Absolutely is, you know, still running two by two in that, uh, that middle front pack as Helvson and Freder uh, Fredrickson going after each other. The two teammates were just slugging it there for a second as right now this field is turning this track into a Waffle House situation. There are cars scattered, smothered, and covered on just about every inch of the racing surface. Oscar Fredrickson three wide coming out of turn two there for a moment. It's this front pack. Oh, big slide out of the 112 and into the side of the 30. Caution is out. Oh, watch. Oh. It was the 20 of Robert Lundgren. Caught with nowhere to go. That Camry's looking like a pug-nosed dog right now. Oscar Fredrickson into the pits as well, and we saw it happen live. Unfortunately for Oscar Fredrickson, just lost it coming out of turn two, uh, coming out of turn four, and sent himself around. I, I couldn't tell from that angle at least if he had gotten any help from the thirty. And then here comes the twenty with nowhere to go. Somebody else might have been the 83 that caught a piece of that as well. So we can ride on board with the 30 of Wager. Oh, yeah, no, he got into the yep, 112. Yeah, he did. Wager doing a good job of being able to stay straight at least. You want to see something interesting watch that from the onboard of the 85 85 of stefan wong if that was the car we saw that might have caught a, a bit of it at the back end there i don't think he did we'll do just that On board the 85, this is down the back straightaway. You can see how far back in the field Wong is. Having to pedal this car already. There's the incident happening in front of him. And, oh, boy. Just, yeah. just missed it. Uh, he, there was a little shunt. You could see on that right front, but other than that, So caution number one here tonight on the speedway. Just barely does get out in front of the pace truck as well as we're getting set to go back to green flag racing, set to double up. As, I mean, Tony, we have we saw it a little bit during the, during the heat race this track is a little bit slick, and also, as we saw, uh, didn't point it out, but currently an 18-kilometer wind right now. There's a lot of wind that's going to mess with these cars here throughout this race tonight. Oh, it absolutely is, and it's, it's not just the wind. It's the direction of the wind, as sometimes it's down the back straightaway. Sometimes it's a crosswind coming out of two, and it can do it. They could change direction in the same lap. So right when you think you've got it nailed, forget it. You're going around. 
Um, you know, but the track temperature, not quite as, as hot as we have seen here at Kansas, but it's close. Just 35 degrees C as we get set to go back to green flag racing once again. There goes the 71, Jesper Erickson in the 37 with the big push. Coming up from behind as Brostrom and Erickson wide. break free. And, yep, it's three wide in the middle, as you would expect. It's Hammerstedt on the outside, Hefletison on the inside, and in the middle, Daniel Homer. Homer was the meat in that sandwich. And, you know, we, we I, I say it all the time, the most terrifying thing you can hear your spotter say at any place other than maybe Talladega is three wide, you're the meat. 81 of Michael Hefletison. Still trying to work on Sam Hammerstedt and at 30 of Weigert. Still doing what he can on the back of that 81. Battle for the sixth position right now between these three. Now three wide. Of course it is. <laughs> why wouldn't it be? You know, it's just Kansas, and it's hard to, hard enough to go too wide most days here. But, 74 uh, of Hammerstead making it very close coming out of turn four. Is that Jonas Gunnarsson on the outside line in the 33, that purple and white 33 for Alkin? Trying to make something happen. As Andre Salander coming up behind him as well. Another Alcan teammate. Same with Michael Hefletison in the 81. The 74 of Hammerstedt going to the inside. Still great side-by-side -side racing through the middle. That's the 111 of Anton Bratberg on the outside line. It's a battle for 16th. Is it that as Weigert still trying to figure out what he has to do here? to get through that traffic. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, Alex, he, in the other league that I broadcast, that he is a participant in or was a participant in, the mile and a half are right in his wheelhouse. Uh, you know, so I'm not really surprised that Weigert's in the top 10. I'm not surprised at all that Linus uh, is in the top 10 and actually leading this piece right now. Um, you know, but I, I am a little bit surprised that uh, Linus's fiance Emily Fogrell is outside the top twenty because she normally does quite well here on the uh, uh, mile and a half. But this is quite it's an, they call it a cookie cutter, but it's not because this track is probably the the most peculiar. Uh, layout of any of the mile and a half that we're going to visit in series. Riding on board with the number four, running in that 21st position. Sfagrel trying to work her way up to the three in front of him. That's Nyholm, Erling, and Godalakis just in front of that number four. Try to keep Connie Lundell behind her. working that inside line and you just saw she made a big gain on that 76 of Godalakis who's running the middle and the top line well we're getting close to the point where you probably are starting to wear all of the the goody off the tires the the good rubber that uh, you know and you're, you're gonna have to start really getting those elbows up and driving it if you if you've been up on the top side all race long so far and you know she's she's probably figuring now it's time to start working her way forward um, you know being as with 85% uh, fuel fill you're looking at about 30 to 35 laps on a tank of go fast it's not from what I'm seeing here I'm not sure if the, the numbers have been changed up a little bit, but it's from at least from this from uh, Linus got about 50 to 53. So there will be a pit stop here 
in this first stage, but it's not going to come it's until later as we're taking a look at Philip Bjork in the 044, swinging down in front of Peter Helmbro in the 77. Philip Bjork currently running in the 12th position, the highest running right now of the drivers that participated in the heat race just prior to the start of this. By the way, we mentioned the stage break. Caution, uh, the uh, first stage will end at the end of lap 60. So we'll be going all the way through lap 60 here before we finish out the final 100 laps here at Kansas. Tony Oivinen currently running in the ninth position, trying to fend off Dennis Schrepp in the 48. He's a bat. I'm taking a look back a little bit further. Uh, Anton Bratberg going after it, trying to, to claw his way now into the top 15. And here comes Kim Nyholm, the winner of the heat race, finally starting to make some headway, currently sitting plus six. But your biggest mover right now is uh, Eric Lundberg in the uh, 18, currently sitting plus 13. Excuse me, 13. I'll take that back. Lundberg is actually the, uh, the highest running of the sprint race participants. In the 11th position, Philip York just behind him. Boy, three wide there towards the back. It's Thomas Peterson in the nine. Currently running in the 18th position. Trying to catch down the 78 and the one six, uh, the 016. It was uh, Robert Lundgren that they had just passed. Oscar Fredrickson has not yet rejoined the racetrack in the 112, so he is currently, uh, he's not out of the race just yet, but he is still sitting on pit road. Lundgren back out on the racetrack, five laps down at the moment. I dare say that that shot that he took to the uh, to the front end may have popped the engine on that car, as that's something we have noticed since the latest damage model has come out for this car, is it is a lot easier to, to blow an engine with the radiator damage. Uh, at speed as here he, yeah, he's finally put it on the hauler. So, Oscar Fredrickson only makes it two circulations around this racetrack before uh, for ending his night. Jonas Gunnarsson up here battling for the third position, trying to take it back away from Jesper Eriksson. Side-by-side -side battle for third here between these two. See, Erickson's been just a little bit quicker, just marginally quicker than Gunnarsson over these last five laps. They were dead even on time last time around. But that 37 proven to be just a tad bit quicker oh. than Gunnarsson right now as the caution comes out. Looks like Robert Lundgren again. Backwards in turn yeah. two. Let's see what happened this time oh. to Lundgren. Up on the wall, trying just to stay out of the way. Oh, gets run over by one of his teammates. Well, that's no bueno. I, I don't want to say he blinked out because I know we're... No, he did. There, well, I was, we're in the... We're in a French and, and German server here in the U.S., so I don't know if it's a blink or if it's just a product of being in the the a server on the opposite side of the world from where we actually are. Well, it officially now doesn't matter considering yeah. he just put it on the hauler. So Robert Lundgren done as well. So 41 drivers still making laps around this place as Linus Brostrom leads everybody down pit road, or mostly everybody down pit road. Daniel Holmer stays out. Tony Oivinen stays out. Eric Lundberg, Anton Bratberg, Marcus Stiller, Daniel Bloomfist, all deciding to stay out here under this caution. And that's going to put those guys that did come down for uh, for tires, as it looks like we do have a splash handful. And dashes. Yeah, a lot of them are doing splash and dashes, but those that are are coming down to take tires right now. 
they're really putting themselves behind the eight ball, considering that they've only got five total sets of tires to get them through. And you know, if Daytona is any indication of what we're about to see, we're going to see some some late race issues pop up. And Frank, I will be right back. Yeah, Daniel Homer currently leading the line here. The 84 of Tony Oivinen will start to his outside. We'd like to thank everyone who is watching us here either on our YouTube page or the Svenska E-Racing League and Twitch account. Uh, for some reason, unfortunately, uh, Facebook not playing nice with us today. So uh, it's going to be either on our uh, YouTube or the, uh, the series Twitch account is where you can find us today. Thank you all for making us a part of, for you guys, a, uh, a nice Thursday night. I'm sure for most of you watching, for the rest of us, a Thursday morning, mid-afternoon. I'd like to remind you that coming up here on Sim Racing Media, still have two more races to go here later tonight. The Fired Up Esports League, uh, or Fuel, will be running round number three at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and all that will be a 7.15 p.m. Eastern time start. And uh, the nightcap for tonight will be Sim Racers Edge. They will be running round number three of their season at Richmond after a week off last week and 8, 10 p.m. Eastern time start for those guys. A double dip tomorrow. Both races at the same time. The Circle B Diecast Super Speedway Series will be at iRacing Super Speedway for round number four of their season back in the Xfinity cars. And the Monsters of Speed New Gen Cup Series will be running at Bristol, I believe round number six uh, for their season coming up yes. at Bristol. Both of those races starting at 8.20 p.m. Eastern time right here uh, on Sim Racing Media. Lights have gone out on the Chevy Silverado pace truck. As Homer going to lead us back to green this time. Geico restart zone is in effect. Which means that uh, leader can't just go willy-nilly until they get to that uh, marked out area coming to the uh, the start finish line. So on the way down the back straight away, these guys will go. And uh, coming up, by the way, next week for this series, we'll be back in the GTs next week. Uh, I believe, let me... Uh, yes. No, I know we're back. I know for a fact we're back in the GTs. I'm just not sure where. Uh, I will figure that out in just a moment. But we <laughs> back to green we go. Daniel Homer, first, uh, first nine drivers did not come down pit road in any way, shape, or form. Daniel Homer, back to green flag racing we go. Working lap 25 of 65, just about halfway through the stage, and already in the middle of the field, we're three wide. Oh, of course we are. Because the, why not? It was the 140 of Andre Salander. Now, Salander took tires. So did the 30 of Weger. So these guys are going to be marching their way through the field. Jonas Gunnarsson took tires as well. Look at this gaggle, almost four wide through three and four. You know, Frank, you remember when you were a kid and somebody had a scary movie on the TV and you'd kind of put your hand over your face and kind of peek through your fingers because you weren't sure if you really wanted to see it? No, because I'm not a scary movie guy. Exactly. <laughs> and and that's, that's why you put your hand over your face and kind of peek through your fingers like, eh, no, I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah, that's kind of what I was doing when I saw him go four wide and I was cringing. Michael Hefleidison also trying to work his way through. Hefleidison took tires. First driver on tires right now is the 144 of Andre Salander. Boy, and look at Weger take the inside. Still three wide coming through. That's Weger to the bottom. 
It was the 302 of Allard that was stuck on the outside line. And he wisely lifted out of that, so in case something popped off. Boy, Boy. Look at Wagger take four cars through three and four. And Solander's still right with him. Uh, and 30 is moving right now. I don't even know what to say at this point. Up Just... into second. Still, the four wide again. Hefleidison on the inside trying to make some work, uh, trying to get some work done on these new tires. The 044 of Bjork as well on fresh tires trying to follow him through. And look who just won the pony is Alexander Weigert is now leading this piece. Great run from Weigert and Andre Solander as well. Up here at the front now, the 33 of Jonas Gunnarsson also on fresh tires. Coming through, Tony Oivinen. Some of the moves that were being made yeah, they were by the guys on fresh tires. That when, as soon as the green came out. Well, it, it, you know, I have a great respect for the the Swedish people and, you know, the, the Scandinavian areas. Uh, that was some redneck stuff right there. <laughs> Hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> Daniel Solo that, tried to work his crazy. way up through, and they're still three wide, nearly four abreast, side by side. All over this place, the guys on fresh tires try to cycle their way back up to the front, while guys on older tires still trying to make, still trying to get into a spot. As look at the 76 of Godalakis right on the back of Nyholm. Godalakis did take tires, so did Nyholm, but that 58 is stuck at the moment behind the 111 who has not pit at all yet. Uh oh, and the caution is out. Oh, boy. Simon Green, it would appear. Yep, there's the 585 of Green. It's like Kenneth Tier may have gotten into it as well. It's the 49 of Kenneth Tier. We'll take a look and see what happened here between these two. It's the 49 of Tier, a big wiggle. Oh, that's what happened. The 016 had a little bit of a wiggle that spooked the 50, uh, the 49 it appeared to be. Oh my. Watch the wiggle from the 016 here on the bottom. And the 49 react back up the racetrack and the 508 had no clue what was coming. Yeah, and that was, that was a good shot by both of them into the wall. Um, and I dare say that's our first, thank God this is a simulator moment of the night. With this on board with Simon Green. To see is no clue any of this is coming until it's already happening. Jump on board with Kenneth Tier. We'll see what he saw. 016 makes the move. And then Tier, you saw just a quick little quick little jink to the right. And unfortunately, the 585 was there. Well, the 585 was already off pace. Yeah, he hadn't taken tires. Right. And, you know, and that was that was a big thing. It's, he was trying to stay to the high side to stay out of the way, you know, making sure that he could make it to the stage caution. And, well... Uh, heck are we seeing right now so anyone who hadn't come down and taken tires under the previous caution have done so now uh, there's a handful that still haven't philip carlin in the 22 has not come down to pit road yet nor has jonas skoglin Genbat. Well, a couple of guys did drive down pit road there so i don't know whether they missed their box or they were trying to cycle their way to the back it looks like that's the case, yeah. Marcus Stiller in the 013. He has not come down pit road. Anton Bratberg is in now. He was running in the top 10, had not come down pit road. 
Philip Carlin back in. Skoglin back in. Ganbat back in. So we are uh, just a little bit past the halfway mark in this stage. It's 45 going. That's Ganbat uh, missed his pit box. Be careful going backwards on pit road for too long. I wouldn't want to do it. You yeah, know, that's that's black flag territory. That's what we're getting at. Is uh, next race, we found that out. Next race for this series, again, will be in the GT3 cars. That will be at Mount Panorama next Thursday. So Mount Panorama will be the next time these cars will head. Uh, the GT3s will head back out. And then in two weeks' time, the next time we see the cup cars out, it will be at Sonoma. So road course races galore here over the next three weeks for this series. Should be a fun one for everybody. Because then I believe it's Imola for round number four, the halfway point of the season for the GT3 it is. cars. It is. Looking forward to that one. So it'll be Mount Panorama, Sonoma, and then Imola. The next four races. Absolutely. Three, I can count. So Weggert... Well, one, of it, one of us can. <laughs> So it's Weggert on the front row with Andre Salander in the 140. Jonas Gunnarsson and Michael Hafleidison will make up row number two. Philip Bjork and Linus Brostrom in row three. Seeing a lot of those Akintec cars up here towards the front. The 140, the 81, the 33. You mean the Volvos in the field? Yep. The the 13 of Daniel Solo still he's working his way up, but he's just outside the top 10. So those Alcantec cars have really figured something out here and have been very successful at least in the early going here. A little bit past halfway in the stage. Again, the stage will run up at lap 60. The end of lap 60. Green flag back in the air. Weggert with a good jump, and we're off and running again. And everybody playing nicely so far. As just a slight tire advantage for a couple of drivers out there towards the back. But that, that is an angry gaggle of cars as the front starting to get single filed out. That could be the death knell for the drivers that are still running side by side. Boy, midfield, four wide, 18, 19, Eight contact, 79. Burst. Boy, how did they all make it through that? This is about in the mid-20s. This is where the, the line of drivers that pit on lap 21 and 32 is. So you'd expect the gaggle there is even still up here in the midfield. Right behind the 71 of Linus Brostrom. We're still battling side by side here. Look at the 13 of Solo all the way up at the wall. Keepers. 74 of Hammerstedt just about dooring the 9 of Peterson. Still three wide. I don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> you know, and I'm up here in the broadcast booth. I'm not out on track. That was Shrep. This that is was... why I'm... This, this is the reason why I'm in the broadcast booth, Frank, because I, I, I know my heart could not take being out on track right now. Yeah, no, I'd be constantly going, hearing three wide, you're the meat. I'd be going a little bit crazy, too, as there's the 71 of Brostrom. Now, Brostrom, when he came in on, laps, on lap 21, he did not take tires, nor did Jesper Eriksson in the 37. So those guys are running on their original set of tires still, but they filled up with fuel. So a testament to those two being able to run up here at the front on the same tires they started the race on, running around all these guys on fresh rubber. Yeah, it, it, not really surprising if you followed um, any of the, the cup racing that we present on Sundays here on uh, Sim Racing Media. Uh, you know, we have seen both Brostrom and uh, 
uh, Erickson get a lot out of their tires and they're able to double stint where a lot of drivers aren't able to do that. Uh, although I don't think they're probably going to end up in the top 10 in this stage from what it's looking like right now as the fresh shoes seem to be doing what they need them to do. Uh, looking at Brostrom right now and he's two, two full seconds uh, of fall off currently with the uh, 41 lap old tires. There is Brostrom in the 71 on the outside line. Three wide behind them still is the 83 of Jonas Skoglund trying to work his way up through the field. It's the 302 of Allard that he's stuck be, uh, to beside. Now the 76 of Godalakis in front of that number 83. So let's jump on board with that 83 just to see what in the world it's like racing this close. Yeah, it's um No thanks. See yeah, it's quite a trip. <laughs> Boy, very close on the left front with the 76. 76 around. No, no, he's not. He's not quite around just yet. He certainly went wide. Well, he certainly certainly had to catch the car, I should say. Coming out of turn two, jumps back yeah. up on the apron, almost loses it again. On the apron, on the banking, almost loses it again. Somehow keeps it straight. Great job, Martin Gadalakis. That is the first time I've seen a car get that sideways and be able to be saved. Martin Godelakis, one of the Holy very few. Cow. Godelakis, one of the very few drivers in this series that is an independent. And I'm sure after a save like that and a series like that, oh, as no. the caution comes out now. Marcus Stiller in the infield. And it would appear to be the 79 of Daniel Holmer. Uh, it absolutely would be, as he's got that car rolling again, finally. One of the bright esports entrants in the field here tonight. Let's take a look and see what happened once again coming off of turn four. Homer jumped up to the outside trying to get around Wong in the 85. Stiller just trying to avoid the incident. He went door to door. I believe that was with the 22. Possibly. Once again, it's on board with the 79. Take a look off the back and see who we got, who we made contact with. It was one of the the old gents cars. It looks like oh, there was the 200. 200 of Patrick Pfeffer. There's more pitch strategy playing out. Jesper Erickson coming down pit road. Pfeffer coming down as well. Hammerstead in. Linus in. So these guys will be looking to take tires now. Try to make a charge up through the field here for the end of this stage. And they're going to have about 15 laps to get it done. Unfortunately, so. unfortunate for Alexander Weggert and Andre Solander, they had had a couple of seconds lead over the rest of the field. By the time the caution came out, that was uh, Ganbat in the, 50, uh, the 45 getting his wave around. So under caution for the fourth time today here at Kansas Speedway for the Carl Skoga Self Storage 400. I 
have about 13 or so laps to go. By the time we get to the stage caution, we're going to do another lap under caution at least. I mean, Tony, we've we've seen a lot of of great action here today so far. I mean, it's it's going to come to a point where it's not going to be sustainable anymore. We've seen a lot of of close racing, a lot of tight racing, and a lot of very aggressive moves. But it is it's going to get to a point where there's going to be a lot more wrecks than better moves happening. Well, I mean, it's it's almost to the point now where, uh, or it's at the point now where if you breathe into the wrong nostril, you're probably going to wad the car and take about four other cars with you at minimum. Um, you know, but we, yeah, we've been seeing very aggressive moves uh, here in the early going. Uh, you know, you would, you would think that we were on lap, 147 instead of just lap 47. Coming around. We should be one to go here. So again, with the yep, lights going out on the uh, the safety truck there. And as the sun peaks behind a cloud, the track temperature has already dropped a handful of degrees. Well, it's 35 degrees Celsius at the beginning of the race, now 34. Ambient temperature remaining the same, though, but that wind's still swirling between west and south, uh, southwest and uh, straight south. It is at that. Is uh, Alex Weigert going to lead us back to green as they come down the American Ethanol back straight away here at picturesque Kansas Speedway? And, Frank, you brought up an interesting point about all the roads that lead to this speedway. Uh, they're named after other NASCAR tracks. Yep, all those those vein roads that you see up there at the top of the screen there. The, the big ring road that goes around this racetrack is uh, Daytona Street, I believe. Well, it's named after Daytona. I know that. I don't know if it's Street Daytona Avenue. Way. Daytona Way. Uh, there's, as we go back to Green Flag Racing here, but yeah, you have Nazareth Way, you have Talladega Way, you have North Carolina Way. Quite that a, didn't uh, take yep, long. Yeah, no, we're back under caution again. Antoine oh. Aramon getting into it. The one uh, that's the 19, the Pontus Nielsen. It's like Patrick Pfeffer as well. Bjorn Brostrom, that's the 116. Beached. Rear wheel spin and nothing else going on. That's what happened. Take a look at it now. See what happened on this restart. There he goes. He gets it out. See what happened on the restart. Keep your eye on the 76. 76. That's got the Lacus. Gets the jump and ooh, 37. Getting into the 19. We'll see it again here. So the, the yellow, red, and black number 76 there on the outside line starts, stops, and the 37 just has nowhere to go and nowhere to react. And then beyond that, everyone else having their own little issue. Well, the 19 got down into the 016, and that's what beats the 016. Yeah. Cheers, Erickson. Are these team cars starting right in the line as there's... Dilson just rolling it back down the racetrack. Right 
back out in front of traffic trying to get the car straight as quick as he could. And unfortunately for him, the 016 was in the way. Yep. Doesn't, doesn't appear to be too much damage on that BMW M3. Jesper I, I, have to, I have to commend this league in the creativity <laughs> they have been showing with the makes of cars in the Cup Series. There's the BMW. 33 of Jonas Gunnarsson running the Volvo. Same thing with the 81 of Michael F. Liedison. And the 13. A Daniel lot of Solo. Volvos here. The only, other, the only other brand I've seen used on the next-gen car is I think somebody made one into a Nissan GTR in another league I used to broadcast. But yeah, no, creativity abound here in the... Uh, this whole series is, is just... I, I, I love this series, both... In, 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 and admittedly, Frank, I'm not as versed on the road courses as you and, and our normal uh, third uh, third broadcast partner, uh, Jason, are. But these guys make it interesting. Guys and gals. Absolutely a great run to open up the season. At, uh, at Suzuka, then uh, last week again, another great run. At Road America, if you haven't seen those races, definitely take a look. That was Road see. Atlanta. Oh, Road Atlanta, you're, you're right. I knew what track I was talking about. I just said the wrong one. Uh, and the reason why we bring up uh, the amount of cautions that have been coming out and uh, the stage break for tonight being at the end of lap 60, The uh, if a caution comes out past the start of lap 56, the stage is over. So we're getting uh, we're getting a couple laps to go until we hit that point of no return, at least as far as the stage goes. And we'll go back to green to start lap number 54 here today. Well, if that's the case. The next flag will end it. Yeah, pretty much at this point. <clears throat> Unless we get another restart caution like we just had. And then we will get to rack them and do it again. Well, let's find out. <laughs> so it'll be Alexander Weggert and Jonas Gunnarsson lining up in row number one yet again. We saw the great run that Weggert had after the pit stop cycle on lap 21 that got him from about the mid-teens back up to the race lead. Same thing with the 33, the 140, the 81, the, 40, the 044. These guys had all taken tires back on lap 21 and have gotten themselves up to the front. Green flag set to come out. Into the Geico restart zone they go. Green flag in the air. Back racing again here at Kansas. Weigert wastes absolutely no time jumping on the loud pedal. And that is an angry pack of hornets behind him. Oy, said, they. Wasting no time as well. Here's back in the middle of the pack. Jokin Huet in that 101 in the middle. 71 of Linus Brostrom working his way back up. It's the 487 in the middle. Brostrom gets them both. Now looking to carry that momentum to the outside line, making it three wide again. They're almost four wide back around 20th as uh, Yoko Ware trying to figure out a, a line up through the middle finally does get clear of uh, Stiller and uh, Johnson. Daniel Solo into the wall on the outside line. Those Alcatech cars, four of them running in the top five. All side by side, trying to chase down the 30 of Weggert. 
have Leadison and Solo going door to door right now. And, it, you know, you would think these guys working on the same team would, would figure it out that if they want to reel in Weiger, they've got to oh. get single file. Oh, my goodness. It's the 13 of Solo getting into the wall again. We've seen him do that a couple of times here thus far in this race. 18 of Eric Lundberg coming up through the middle. Solo's intent on running that outside line. He's pushed it a little bit too hard on a couple different occasions. See the 18, that street trends machine of Lundberg. It's all over the place here. Just a couple of laps to go until the end of the stage. There's Thomas Peterson running in ninth. Good grief. Andre Solander, oh, around goes the 84. Oyvind in caution is out and that'll be the end of the stage. He said a lot of close racing. It's going to get to the point where it's not sustainable anymore. And that's exactly what happened there. Just came became a little bit too much. Let's see it again. Tony Oivinen. Already around. It was off of one of the Alkin cars. Stefan Wong doing a great job getting as little damage as he possibly could have gotten. But this was just all insane. Up here at the front of this field is Tony Oivinen. Oh, he's already around here. He got yeeted by the uh, 18. Yeah, wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have suspected less. Mm, I'd like to point out the 18 has his roof number on upside down, which is why it took me a second to figure out which car it was. So here's Oivinen coming up through the middle. And, oh, yep, the 18 thought he was clear to jump up to that outside line. It's a big hit there. By the 302 of Ricardo Lard. Let's see that actually from Allard's point of view. Running on board with Allard right now. Incident happening in front of him on the brakes and just Eight. car in front of him and nowhere to go. Well, you called it. You, you said it was coming and well, that's exactly what just happened. Now this would be uh, interesting here. Okay. Depending upon, uh, now this is the first time we've gone through this, so I'm not sure when the stage is officially over. If the stage is officially over at the time of caution, then Alexander Weggert will have won the stage in the number 30. But if it is over as of right now, because we had just passed lap 60 onto 61, then Jonas Skoglund will have just won the stage. Uh, no, it, it ended when the caution it came out. It is at the moment they, of they caution. Did, okay, so that they is... They did announce that in the sim. Okay, so that will mean... Again, first time going through this one. So that would mean Alexander Weggert for Bright Esports wins the stage here today. And with that, that will take us to a quick break. We'll be right back. You are watching the Carlskoga Self Storage 400 here from Kansas Speedway. We will be back right after this.
Well, we said it was going to be a quick break, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, back, going back to Green Flag Racing, Jonas Skoglin and Philip York will make up the front row, beginning of stage number two here at Kansas Speedway, <coughs> round number two of the season. Green Flag back in the air. We're off and running again. Skoglin getting a good restart that time as uh, Sam Hammerstadt trying to make up some moves right now. Jonas Fors up 17, currently running in the P3. Some good action up here at the front. Everybody seems to have calmed down a little bit, Frank. Yep, and never mind. I no sooner got the words out of my mouth. Emily Fagrell on the back straight away. See what happened. It looked like Thomas Peterson might have been involved as well. Coming out of turn two. See what happened to the four. Oh, that was the 52 and the 81 actually had the issue. So that was the 52 of Heflita Johansson. that had started off. There's Johansson. Oh, Johansson really slow in the middle of the field and the, oh boy, the nine got loose. And unfortunately, you'll see what happened from the start of the, from the start of the, uh, from the restart here, the start of the, the stage. So watch the 52 of Johansson. As a matter of fact, we'll jump on board with him here. They appear to have too much trouble getting on the go and just... He just never shifted up into fourth gear. And then the 9 well, then the 9 comes down and hits him and boy, back right up into the four. That's what happened. If you saw the dashboard, oh, yeah. he never got oh, out yeah. of third gear. Yeah. So, yeah, that that definitely. Uh... If if that was a, a brain fart moment, I think we've all done it. There's the 52 coming out of pit road now. We've I've lost track had... of the amount of times I've done that. Well, especially with these cup cars now with five gears, I know the car's been out for about a calendar year now. But still, it's, it's, it is hard sometimes to remember, hey, we have a fifth gear in this car after being four gears from pretty much from the inception of NASCAR. Yeah. It's a tough break for, you know, everybody involved in that one, but... Um, so far, no retirements from that incident to speak of. We do have uh, four retirees so far, though. Uh, Martin Linsnick, uh, Kenneth Tier, Robert Lundgren, and Oscar Fredrickson all deciding to uh, put them on the hauler early and try to beat the traffic to get to the next event. like to thank everyone joining us here on both ends of uh, of the streaming spectrum whether it be on YouTube or on Twitch from the series accounts appreciate all of you being here today an early morning for for some of us for me you know being up since 7 a.m. to get ready for this race I've been up since 4.30. Well, yeah, for, for an event that never happened. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about that as I'm not <laughs> of happy course. with of course. With my cab company. So about to begin lap 67 of 165. And we will double up and get the restart rolling here. Definitely like to thank Marcus Hagman in the YouTube chat. 
Toaster N as well on the YouTube side. Oh, yeah. And, and if you guys could translate that for us, please. <laughs> Fortunately, we're a little busy at the moment. So he'll be, he'll be Skoglund and Hammerstedt on the front row here, just as it was the last time around. Jonas Force, who had the uh, have had the notation of being the only the, the last driver to have made it out of qualifying and not having to do the heat race starting 20th up into the third position. As Tony, why don't you take us away? Pace truck peels on off. Jonas Skoglund has the button as he brings him into the Geico restart zone. Immediately jumps on the loud pedal and gets a good takeaway Ooh. as he's got those Force Esports cars just stacked up behind him. That outside line, it really had an accordion right around Wegger in the 30. Look at Daniel Solo right to the outside in the 13. Wasted no time. Oh, contact, 33 around. Oh, Gunnarsson. And it kind of makes you wonder, because I know a lot of road course racers don't always run with the spotter turned on. I'm wondering that if that's, the, it, if that's yeah. the situation that we're running into. See the best angle we can here is that was again we had mentioned solo jumping right out to the outside in the 35 i don't know if he got loose or if he was coming up to try to get in behind the 13 but the 35 of erickson not clear and ends up bouncing right back down into the 33 of gunnerson right on board with gunnerson here side of him so, yeah, again just, just no no knowing of what was going on there well I mean, I, 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 again if if you had a spotter they would tell you that you were in a three wide situation because the 13 was on a charge they were they were that, coming from that angle it looks like that 13 got out ahead of that 35 rather quick However, he had been beside him pretty much since the middle of the corner, so it's not like he wouldn't have known that he was there. It was just a little surprise, a surprise pop when he came, when he actually jumped out in front of him coming out of the corner. So Gunnarsson into repair damage. Fagrel back in. Oivinen back in. Bjorn Bro, uh, Brostrom. Carrying the series sponsor on his car today. Uh, carrying the race sponsor, I should say, on his car today. And happy belated birthday to Bjorn. Very good. Uh, he celebrated that on Sunday, I believe. Robert Erickson, Pontus Nilsson. Also down pit road as well. There is Nilsson and Erickson both rolling out. Uh, Jonas Skoglund, just catching up to the pace truck now, has not come into pit since lap 33. Now, I say that um, knowing that Philip Bjork in the 044 and Jochen Huet in the 101 have not stopped since lap 21. And we've had a ton of caution laps, and that's what's have. been really helping the uh, the fuel mileage of those cars. Yeah, this would be about it. It'd be that's 50 laps ago. So these guys, with with the cautions that have come out here, and there have been a number of them. Certainly. Uh, certainly helped these guys. Now, speaking of. Speaking of cautions, I want to say we're on number eight at the moment. 
Sounds about right. <clears throat> Throw the tower up, it'll tell you. I do not have that available. Really? Uh, yep, I do not have that up right now. Okay. And I don't think I have one with a tower. Back at Daytona. Back at Daytona last, uh, two weeks ago. Ten cautions for a total of 30 laps back at Daytona to open up the season. And we're, we're getting there. Field, it's it's looking like the field is going to line up single file here for this restart. Probably not a bad idea. Yeah, just to kind of chill everyone out here. Do you have to be careful, though, because the outside line on a single file restart, you can only pass to the right. So it would behoove these guys to get up as close to the wall as they possibly can through three and four to make sure no one can pass. However, if somebody goes before the drivers in front of them go, it creates a bigger accordion effect. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. That's about right. That's about right. <laughs> and yes, they, they have officially changed it to a single file restart. So to, to cool these guys out a little bit, to avoid going three wide here on these restarts. Um, green flag back in the air, and that's certainly uh, not what I was expecting to see. <laughs> Only place you can pass is to the right. Let's leave the right wide open. As Scotland goes to the race lead, Jonas Force up into second. Well, the only guys that really protected that outside guys at the back uh, were the guys at the back that have IndyCar experience because that's the way they do it in the official IndyCars in iRacing not sure where that camera went there's Jokic Wet on board not sure what in the world happened to that camera initially it's 300k going down into turn one Yikes. That camera's not having a good time there. No, can't say it is. Battle for the lead. Hammerstadt and Four is going after each other now, as Hammerstadt does have the advantage. They've both gotten past Jonas Skoglund in the 83. You saw it in the back there for the more keen-eyed viewer, that blue nose. That's Weggert making it three wide down the front. Trying to follow Michael Hefletison through. And I would say, Tony, yep, that uh, single file restart definitely worked. It absolutely did. It, you know, and, and this is one of those tracks that you can't be afraid as a, as a race admin to throw it single file because... So much can pop off so quickly here as we're three wide in the top ten. Yep, that's Andre Salander in the 140 on the inside of the two team superior cars. That's Anton Bratberg in the 111 on the outside. The 22 in the middle was Philip Carlin. Really pinching that uh, 141, uh, 140, pardon me, down. Weger trying to make his way through yet again. Those team superior cars always seem to follow, uh, find each other. They worked very well with each other at, at Daytona. Daytona yep. Daniel Solo continuing to work his way forward. Philip York on the inside. That's Christian Gantz. First time we've mentioned him tonight. In the number 38, up into the top 10 for the first time. Up 29 positions from where he started today. Jonas Scogland and Peter Helmbro going after each other with pitchforks and axe handles right now <laughs> as they have not gotten away from each other since the green came out. Well, they have not as Helmbro 
trying to find his way up into the top four. There is Holmer has gotten away from these guys. Helmbro and Skoglund now sort of holding up a line both on the inside and on the outside. As that's Marcus Stiller in the 013 running behind the 77 on the bottom and Linus Brostrom in the 71 on the outside line now make it to the third lane. Three wide wave bye-bye. Skoglund is a uh... Brostrom throws it to the top shelf. <clears throat> Again, and Skoglund's going to fall right back through the middle here. Again, he has not pit since lap 33. Everyone else has been into pit road since at least lap 45 around him. I mean, he would, I can't say I can fault his strategies. You, you do have the bonus point for leading a lap. Um and you're taking away the possibility of somebody else <clears throat> getting most laps led. As have Liedison and Scoglin going after each other. Weigert right there as well. Just getting it right now. On board with Weigert. He was the stage winner here today. Ten extra points headed his way. after missing out on a season opening win by one one thousandth of a second at Daytona a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely is it was the, the difference of the tip of the tip of the splitter to the emblem on the grill. That was the, the margin of victory. It's Anton Bratberg. in the 111 on that outside line. Christian Gantz falling back as well in the 38, 37 of Jesper Erickson, who was leading coming out of turn four at Daytona, ended up finishing third. Please. Missed out on a win by four one thousandths of a second. Scoglin just got put in a three wide situation as he continues to backslide through this field. But the good news is, if you are Jonas Skoglin, uh, you are going to have an extra couple sets of tires for uh, late race heroics. You also have to be in a position to actually use them and put them to some good use and good effect, as there's the 113 of Marcus Stiller. Darn near catching the wall, keeping the 71 of Linus Brostrom at bay, the 81 of Michael Hefletison trying to find any way to get around right now. Sam Hammerstead up at the front of the field in the number 74. Jonas Fors behind him. Both of those drivers running for the Fors Esports team. Hammerstead for prospects. Jonas Fors, as you would imagine, a part of uh, the management team. It's funny those little bumps you get when your name is on the team. Yeah, go figure, right? <laughs> But uh, I, I'm, I'm watching this battle right now just inside the top 10 between Brostrom, Weigert, and half Wiedeson and Helmbro. And, I mean, this is intense back here. Solander has just gotten through. So has Homer in the number 79. It wasn't that long ago that Homer was backwards. A lot of cautions, able to get them, get himself back up. Guys in front of him wrecking, guys behind him wrecking, hitting in front of him. As there goes Daniel Solo looking for the second spot. Solo jumping to the inside of Jonas Force. Can't say I blame him, especially this deep into a run. We've seen him make so many moves, though, all throughout the day on the top. For him to jump to the bottom, is that one had to have thrown fours at least. If fours has been paying attention, had to have thrown fours for a little bit of a loop there. So the next six cars behind them are about six-tenths of a second back. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, some good battling with that uh, that Peloton group, battling amongst each other. It's Alexander Weiger cannot get away from Marcus Stiller right now. Not quite. Brostrom still side by side with Hefletison. Weger 
battling side by side with Holmer as he has fallen off these last couple of laps. Saw him just a second ago in fifth. He's now battling just to stay in the top 10. Seventy-seven of Helmbro on the inside line. The seventy-one and eighty-one of Brostrom and Hefletus, and still side by side. I don't think either one of them has has a definition for the word quit. Yeah, no. It's if they do, they're certainly ignoring it. You are correct, sir. Seventy-one of Brostrom's just now does get the position. Two of your biggest movers right now, sitting 10th and 11th, it's Marcus Stiller and, uh, as I say that, Daniel Bloomquist drops back to 12, uh, but up 22 and 23 respectively. Christian Gans in 14th and the 38, sitting plus 24. Now, it's spoken much about that 487 of Daniel Bloomquist. We saw him around a little bit earlier on as one of the drivers who had come into pit way back on lap 21, Philip Bjork has now finally tapped out on lap 90, bringing it down pit road. The only other driver that came down pit road on lap 21 is Jochen Huet. He has not pit since that initial pit stop back on lap 21. Well, he's gonna get as much as he can out of this tank and the good news is he's going to have three three sets of tires still laying in the pits. Not sure how much more he can go it really depends on how much he was saving going through uh, going through all of these cautions as Jonas Fors really having a hard time now. He's got Michael Hefletison who's just gotten around Linus Brostrom. Peter Helmbro there as well. So is Solander. Solander was up in third, now falling back down to seventh. Yeah, Andre not having a good time of it here tonight. Uh, again, ton of battling going on. Uh, uh, right around fifth back to 14th. Uh, you know, the little pockets of racing starting to rear their head as the 78 eats the wall. That was a hard hit by Forrest. Another one of the Forrest. Not where you would expect to, to see that either. Just means he drove a little bit too hard into the corner. Mm-hmm. For where, for what line he was on is another one of the Fours Racing entries. Part of also a part of the academy. Peter Helmbro finding himself now in fourth. So you got a good little race here between third all the way down to ninth, all the way down to eighth, and then you have this next group here being led by uh, Jesper Eriksson. Antoine Brotberg there as well. All the way back to Christian Gans in 14th. These guys also having a nice little scrap. Forrest battling side by side with Weggert. And funny you should mention Scrap, Frank, as uh, a show that you and I are both big fans of is already announced that it is coming back uh, here in a couple weeks. What would that be? Letterkenny. Ah, you see, they did exactly what I thought they were going to do. <clears throat> yep. As Daniel Homer getting passed up by Daniel Bloomquist. That's the 013 of Marcus Stiller jumping now to the outside. Jochen Huet has finally tapped out. He has gone down pit road. So from lap 21 to lap 94. For Jochen Fuet. Side by side action still going on. Stiller and Homer coming out of turn two. Michael I was Hef watching this, the slugfest between Jasper Eriks and Alexander Weigert. Even closer between Peter Helmbro and Michael Hefletison. Oh, yeah. Up for the third position. Sam Hammerstead has up and run away. He is currently leading by just under three seconds over Daniel Solo, currently running in the second position. And then it's the battle between Helmbro and Hafleedison. So two Force cars and two Alcan Tech cars currently running in the top four positions. 
working lap 96 of 165. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You are watching round number two of the Svenska E-Racing League and Cup schedule. The Karlskoga self-storage 400 from Kansas Speedway. We'll be back right after this. Working lap 101 of 165 here at Kansas, and we do have a driver off. Boy, a big slide there. That was uh, Ganbat in the fifth, in the 45. For Team Superior, still sitting there, but just before, just before that, Tony, boy, did we have a big moment. We fortunately we were able to catch it live. But what a save right here coming up by Jonas Force as he was battling with Daniel Homer. Oh. Here it comes. Oh, no. One time. We'll get to it one more time here. Well, the caution just came out, Frank. Oh, caution came out. Okay. Take a look yeah, at that like in just a moment. The 64 of Stromberg uh, having issues. Oh yeah, he's yeah he's having a couple of issues there. So that will conclude the longest green flag run of the day. And it's one of the bright esports entrances around the seventy six of go to Lacus around as well. So we've got a lot to, to take a look at here. First of all, here is what Holy. happened to the 45. This was just the lap before. So the 45 is trying to come down pit road, ends up blowing the box. <clears throat> Fortunately for him, doesn't hit anything. And has to. And the worst thing that's going to happen to him is that he's going to have to tow. We'll see it one more time from the television side. Boy, they were four wide there for a second. It just couldn't get it woed down. Unsafe pit entry. Somehow doesn't hit the, the pit wall. Now this is just before the caution. Patrick Pfeffer and Pontus Nielsen. These are the guys that are just, oh, the 19 of Nielsen getting a big piece of it. And now here is the reason for the caution. This is Stromberg battling with the 76. 
Boy, 76 gets a big wiggle half on and half off the racetrack. And there's the 19 coming in. See if we could back that up and see what happened a little bit further, <coughs> further along. It actually started with the nine getting into the wall, going through yeah, three and four. Yeah, we're seeing that it now. That stacked up everybody behind him. But the 76 just didn't have it corralled from the initial contact just yet. But you see hard on the brakes. The 19 just had nowhere to go. And now the wreck that almost was. That didn't happen. This is Daniel Homer and Jonas Fors. Possibly. You hope. There we are. 78. Having to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle the whole way down the back straightaway to try to keep that car under control. So a busy last couple of laps as pit stops appear to have just been starting as the caution came out, and now everyone gets a chance to uh, to calmly do it under pit under uh, under caution. They're already in and out. And it's not going to be the money stop. No, well, there's still about sixty laps left in this piece. Expected green flag fuel fill for these guys was expected to be around 50 to 53 laps on a full green flag run. So they are going to be very, very close. And I'm sure if somebody tried to save from here, they could probably make it all the way to the end, that or come painfully close and miss out. Uh, I wouldn't risk it, but then again, I'm no longer a driver in iRacing. <laughs> I am just a commentator. So it'll be Sam Hammerstead and Peter Helmbro up at the front of the field. It's the 45 of Ganbad who's going to have to go to the back here. After coming out of pit road, not far enough ahead of the pace truck, so he will have to go to the back after losing a lap on pit road. So two... Fours racing cars, ahead of two Akin Tech cars. And two more Fours eSports cars. Just about ready to go. Once again, working lap 107, green flag back in the air. Sam Hammerstead leads him away. Side by side restart once again. Three wide once again on the restart. Helmbro left that outside open as Solo just sending it up the inside and Erickson sending it up the outside. And I don't think he's done backsliding yet as Helmbro's already back to fifth. Something's not right with that car. And there we go. Yep, caution's out again. Christian Gans looks like he had, oh, wow. Gantz had had a moment coming out of turn two that we saw during the break. One of the feather online machines going around down the back straightaway. We'll see what happened with Gantz. Came right up into the outside of the 044. lot of runoff Almost. here <clears throat> there is and luckily there is but it's another one of those situations where i i don't think he's got his spotter turned on <clears throat> so 
see from above here. See, I don't know if that's more him coming up or the 44 holding the line. It's just... They looked, at least from the overhead shot, that they both just came together. Yeah. 38 yeah, definitely it's... moved up more, but it just looked like they were both going towards each other. Robert Erickson, Pontus Nilsson, Jochen Huet down pit road, as well as the 38 of Gantz. That should bring Jonas Skoglund around for the lucky dog. And it did. So Skoglund back on the lead lap. Man was leading this race <clears throat> at the stage break. Means now the next car to be getting free pass treatment would be the nine of Thomas Peterson, and he only has the 585 of Simon Green on his lap. So Peterson and Green will be battling for the, the free pass here for the next caution. Absolutely is... Lights should be going out on the pace truck next time by. Should be around two to go. Is interesting to see whether or not because it's. You know, we saw the single file restart and we had our longest green flag run of the race. We go back to double file restarts. And again, we can't get a lap done without another caution coming out, or can't get two done. So it'll be interesting to see what they do if they want to try the double file restart again or if they want to go back to what worked at the single file start. Well, as of right now, they are going double file. This could get interesting, though, yeah, as Hammerstadt should have lane choice as he's got those, uh, he's got his teammates sitting back in fourth and fifth. So if he likes to take the outside lane, he can pick up his teammate. But the, the problem with that is you also put the two Alcantech cars in line with each other as well in the 13 and the 81. So it's do you split do you split yourself up off of your teammate or do you put both teams at an advantage? And he's gonna take the inside line here as we are gonna double file it up again. We have seen hundred and twenty laps of incredible racing here today. Already from Kansas, the winner of the sprint race, Kim Nyholm, currently running in the 14th position. Currently up front right now, Sam Hammerstedt in the 74. Collecting the lead for the first time during the last green flag run, was able to run to a three-second lead before... Mayhem started right around the pit cycle on lap 101. You taking the green flag on lap 112. Tony, take us away. As the pace truck peels on off, Hammerstadt has the trigger as they go into the Geico restart zone. He holds them down this time. Not quite getting as, as big of a getaway as we've seen so far tonight, but definitely a clean one so far. Cars starting to scatter around and pick their lanes coming through turns one and two. Down the back straightaway we come with a good head of steam. One bailing out down low. There's Dan Homer getting shuffled down. Gets it collected back up, and we're still three wide back there. 
three abreast here just beyond the front pair. That's Jesper Eriksson on the inside. Michael Hef, uh, pardon me, on the outside, Michael Hefleidison on the inside. Andre Salander, Peter Helmbro battling side by side right behind them. They were Still definitely in a three wide situation. They're not done yet is Holmberg trying to find a hole to, to climb up through. Jonas Gunnarsson stuck here in the middle battle, of this pack. Battle for the lead as Solo has gotten to the outside of Hammerstadt. Solo's made that outside line work, gets the run. And that would have been a race win by three one hundredths of a second for Solo. Simon Green in the back has gone off. Going through the infield grass, Simon Green keeps it straight, keeps it green. And I just, I cannot get over the fact that this is probably one of the only leagues that I've been a, a, a member of the broadcast team for where they've saved the next-gen car uh, as far as you get it more than 15 degrees off uh, straight ahead. And the car normally will just snap around on you, but these guys, guys and gals, are making some great saves tonight so far. This door-to-door -door contact between the 35 of Robert Erickson and Simon Green that sent Green down to the infield grass. Hammerstedt back in the race, leads Solo desperately trying to find a way around him. Well, Solo's running that extreme high line. Uh, I, I think if he pinched down just a little oh, bit, he wouldn't be giving up so much in not. the corners. <laughs> and there it goes. Yeah, just or not. Finally get the clear. Back into the race lead. Goes Daniel Solo. Alcantec, fours. Alcantec, fours. Alcantec, your top five. Brostrom mm -hmm. trying to break that up into the top five. Weggert there as well. Weggert the stage winner here in this race. In the number 30. I, I don't even know where to look right now. There's so much good action going on. Uh, Tony Ivan and trying to make something happen right now on the low side is he's got the 33 of uh, Jonas Gunnarsson right there with him. Marcus Stiller looking to figure out how to get by both of them right now as that is your battle for the uh, final spot in the top 10. Or sorry, just outside the top 10. It's 11th for Gunnarsson. We saw Gunnarsson around on the back straightaway earlier on. Has gotten that car repaired and now working his way back up through the field. Up into 11th right now. Eric Lundberg right now holding on to the 10th spot. This is front group of 10 separated by just under a second as Hammerstedt still battling side by side with Daniel Solo for the race lead. Solo though with the run on the outside line out of the corner, able to take the lead. And then he goes to the extreme high side again. Uh, Hammerstadt going to be able to go up and throw the block that's going to open the door. No, it's not. Hammerstadt just made a six-lane change on a two-lane highway. <laughs> Hammerstadt Good. sticking to that inside line. and We saw earlier on during that long green flag run that the inside line was the line that was prevailing. You could run on the outside, but not nearly to the effect on the inside. Solo trying to make that outside line work while he can, as most of the guys in the top 10 are on that bottom. 45 laps to go here at Kansas. Hammerstock, Solo, Havlidison, Brostrom, Erickson, Weigert, Salander, uh, Hol oh, Holmer, <laughs> Lundberg, and... Uh, Ratberg rounding out your top 10 as we currently sit. And Solo's into the wall in three. Yep, that was a big block that Hammerstedt put on Solo. 
going down the back straightaway and Solo taking that outside line took way too much momentum and gas going into turn three ends up catching the outside wall that brings Michael Hefliedison now into the picture in third Hefliedison working on his teammate right now as the top three are starting to pull a little bit of a gap on Linus Brostrom but I dare say that Brostrom it was last down on 103. He's a gambler. He he will try to uh, to stretch it, and I think that's what he's doing. He's he's gone into fuel conservation mode right now, and just waiting for everybody else to do what they need to do. As he's got Jasper Eriksson with him, still trying to get this one sorted out. All the drivers currently occupying the top 21 positions have come into pit on lap 103. Everyone's even. Uh, Daniel Homer to the inside on lap nine. The first of the drivers that came in on lap 108 is Christian Gantz running in 22nd. Not sure why I'm showing Homer uh, in the 79 being his last time he was down pit road is 45. You know, it's I'm seeing 103 is Anton okay. Aramon working his way to the outside of Emily Fagrell. Fagrell running in 15th position, Aramon in 16th, Daniel Bloomfist in 17th, Kim Nyholm working to the inside of Bloomfist now. A little bit of a twitch out of Nyholm uh, coming through the, the trialable portion of the track. That car definitely got unsettled when the, when the 58 went down to the apron. Ermont could not get much close to that wall if he tried. Bloomfist now to the inside of Ermont. 78 of Jonas Forrest jumping into the picture. Four car battle right now for the 16th position. Anton Uman <clears throat> trying to get something figured out with Kim Nyholm right now. Definitely gets by and starts to pull away. Is Bloomquist right there as well? The next one in line is Boy, big dive uh, by uh, Fours. It was a huge dive by Jonas Fours in the 78. Side-by-side side battling inside the top 10. My goodness, what have we just stumbled into? That's Homer in the middle. Bradberg on the top. Gunnarsson on the bottom. And it's going to be Homer, the one who's going to lose out. Is Gunnarsson battling side-by-side side with Bradberg now. This for ninth. And Frank, you and I have been working together way too long because we both click to that battle at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief. Picking him up and laying him down right now as battle for second hot and heavy between the uh, the two teammates. Hepletuson on the low side uh, able to wrestle it away as Solo continues to try the outside line. Almost gets into the 37 of Erickson. Good grief. Erickson really... Boy, putting the work in, putting the effort in, as those three came really close to having a big calamity. And that could have ended uh, very poorly, luckily. Hefliedison really blocking that inside line on Erickson going into one. Of course he is. Seen Why wouldn't you? We've seen a couple of big blocks already in this race, and that block will help Daniel Solo get back up into the third spot. You see Solo running a little bit further down than we have seen him through three and four as he's really leaning on Erickson right now. But uh, yes, for Erickson not, not having any of it is he's still hanging tough. They're going to need to get it sorted out pretty quick because Linus Brostrom is on a charge right now. And Brostrom is. We flip back to uh, the back of the field just outside of the 20th spot. Jonas Forrest, Robert Erling. And Peter Helmbro were battling side by side there for a moment. These guys have it sorted out. We'll go back to that now. As Helmbro, wow, that was Boy. the 82 of Erling. And, 
and, and Jonas Forrest. And 78. Yep, both yeah. in the wall. Right in front of Kim Nyholm, Stefan Wong about a second and a half off of these four. <clears throat> side by side Jonas. battling just inside the top 10. Jonas Gunnarsson and Antoine Bratberg. Three wide again as Oivonen looks to the middle. You know, what, what we're seeing right now out of some of these drivers kind of reminds me of a, an interview I saw with James Hunt in his championship season. Uh, what do you attribute your speed to? Big balls. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. On board with Tony Oivenden. At least we were there for a moment. There we go. Oh, contact between Oivenden and Bratberg. Marcus Stiller and Rick and uh, Ricard Allard. Allard, pardon me. Too many R's and K's and AH's there for to think about that quick. As Allard jumps up into the 13th position. Ooh. Homer, Oivenen, and Bratberg have sorted themselves out. And the front Bratberg of got into the wall going into one. Highest running of those team superior cars right now is that 111. Fagrell there as well. Bringing Bloomquist and Helmbro with her. The 013 of uh, Marcus Stiller was doing uh, the G body shuffle there down the back straightaway the last time by. A little bit of twitchiness going on there. It might be having a tire starting to go down. Coming down to about 30 laps to go. Up at the front, Sam Hammerstead has pulled out to a one-second lead over the two drivers battling behind him. That's Michael Hefletus in the 81, Jesper Eriksson in the 37, running in third. Linus Brostrom running in fourth. Daniel Solo still maintaining his top five position, running in fifth. Oh, big oh. moment there. That was for Bloomquist. Bloomquist still not quite straight as he had a big moment coming out of two. He had a little bit of help on that one. I'm sure he did. Let's see what happened to Daniel Bloomquist. What will happen here just at this next lap. Going into turn one right now. 302 right up against the wall. There's the four there as well. Oh, the 77 thought he had a little yep. bit of room there. Helmbro Graham, the old Spanish archer, the, the old elbow. Yeah, that was a rather aggressive move in a spot where for Helmbro that was never going to work. Four of the 302. Allard and Fagrell. Running side by side. Fagrell takes the spot. She's up to 13th. Daniel Homer battling with Tony Oivan and still. Battle for second now, really getting close between Hefletison and Erickson. You know, you got to wonder how much longer. Is Erickson going to show restraint? Um, I mean, I know you and I got spoiled here <clears throat> for the, the the Saturday series that we both get to do with the uh, the AI series. That we don't see that that emotion get involved with the uh, the AI program. But this is not AI racing. This is actual live people behind a steering wheel. How much longer is Erickson gonna? hold off and uh frank we do have a one thing we do need to take care of is uh when the uh season two of the ai series is going to debut yeah we do have uh no word on that yet it will be very soon uh but uh season two for the ai series here on srm will be uh as announced 
during the uh, season finale for the Super Late Model AI Series. There will be a, um, uh, it will be in the uh, Australian V8 Supercars Season 2. No word quite yet on when that will start, but that will be what Season 2 will bring as Anton Bradberg falling a position to Peter Helmbro. That was for 12th. As the 42 of Ullman gets into the wall, coming off of four, that opens the door for Kiss, Chris, uh, Kim Nyholm <clears throat> as they are side-by-side side coming through the front chute. And that is still a side-by-side -side battle in front of them with Allard and Fours. Boy, another big wiggle from Aramon. Nyholm gave him just enough room. Marcus Stiller there as well in the 0-13. Oh, big, almost a big moment as Ricard Allard comes down pit road. Taking the commitment cone with him all the way to the pit box, and that will be an unsafe pit entry for the 302. so he'll be sitting there for an extra 40 seconds. But that got really close coming out of turn four with Allard coming into pit and the field bearing down on him. Yeah, I don't think there was a lot of communication there letting everyone know that he was coming pit side and everybody that was caught on the low side, we almost had a calamity. Let's take a look at that again as Allard coming down pit road. Oh, that's going into the box, pardon me. Here he comes down pit road. Just really close there is Nyholm. Almost runs into the back of the 302, and again, that will be an unsafe pit entry for running over the cone. It's another thing we haven't talked about much as we see Helmbro and Homer battling side by side. We still have a pit stop left to go here. We've only got about 22 laps to go. Still a pit stop left. The question is, who's gonna be the first one to flinch as Athletason and Erickson for second place, still getting hot and heavy. Very close to each other. They're about a second and a half off of Sam Hammerstead up at the front. There's Hammerstead off to the left of the screen. These three have opened up a two and a half second gap over Linus Brostrom. Now Brostrom won two weeks ago back at Daytona. to open up this season. You can see that 71 getting a big wiggle on coming out of turn one. Those tires are starting to give up. Well, as hard as he's been going, it's not really a surprise. You know, it, I mean, he's been blistering those tires as the gap continues to come down as Erickson and uh, Amp Wiedison still going after each other for second. And even with the battling that's going on, they're still starting to reel in Hammerstadt. Erickson getting into that second position. You can hear how much he's having to let off as he's actually coming down pit road. Jesper hey. Erickson takes second and then jumps to the pit. So does Daniel Solo. Jonas Gunnarsson there as well in the 33 down pit road. All three of them just flirting with disasters. That commitment cone was looming. Jonas Skoglund right now in the 83, getting a lap back off of Sam Hammerstadt. Currently now holds the race lead by three seconds as Michael Hefliedison comes in from second place. Looks like Tony Oivinen coming in as well in the 84. He will do just that. That definitely shakes the field up. Certainly does. It's Robert Erling and Marcus Stiller going after each other. Uh, that is just coming. outside your top ten. There's Erickson coming out of pit road now. It's going to be an interesting battle between himself and the 81 of Hafleidison. Now those two were running line astern, nose to tail. 
coming out of pit road. Peter Helmbro looking for Eric Lundberg on position. Antoine Bratberg, Anton Ermann coming down pit road as well. Hafleidison out of pit road. So is Oivinen. Jesper Eriksson has already gotten well past and ahead of the 81. Salander running side by side with the 30 of Weger. Sam Hammerstead, I think, has to real has to think consider coming into pit road now to stop the bleeding here. Because he is losing a lot of time. Sam Hammerstead, last lap of 33.41. Compare that to the last time around for the 37 of Erickson, a 32-47. Yeah, I mean, and that was <clears throat> in heavy traffic. Uh, you know, the fast lap compared to the last lap, Hammerstadt's looking at about two seconds worth of pace that he's losing right now. Um, you know, and it's, the same goes for everybody right now in the top 10. They've there got is. to stop the hemorrhaging. There's the difference. He's lost two seconds on the last couple of laps alone to Erickson. And Hammerstead, I believe, yep, he's coming in now. He's definitely lost the lead of the race. We know that. And coming down with just a couple of laps to go. Fourteen laps to go here. Hammerstead into the pits. Linus Brostrom now inherits the race lead. You know, Second, I've been looking at the, the pace that Brostrom's been putting up. I think he was saving. I wouldn't doubt it. He's going to try to make this go. Helmbro, Salander, Alex, Alexander Weger coming down pit road. Pitting from third. Side by side, Lundberg. And Solander is around the outside line. Goes Daniel Solo. Solo's gotten around Hammerstadt as well. There's the 74 of Hammerstadt. He's running third place on track right now. Effective third if everyone does come in. So, uh, Erickson has the race lead. Solo four seconds behind. Jesper Eriksson. And that's assuming everyone comes in. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Forz Esports is going to try to make it from here as Brostrom and Helmbro both are... They're not putting up anything blistering. And they're, they're not really battling with each other. Well, now they are. And just I say that. Battling for the race lead. Peter Helmbro, Linus Brostrom, side by side. There wasn't much of a fight, but there was a pass. Helmbro to the race lead, the official race lead. These two a second and a half ahead of Eric Lundberg. As there goes the 47 of ha 74 of Hammerstedt. Get the lap back. Hammerstedt six seconds off of Jesper Eriksson. If the top 10, the, the top 10 are the only drivers that have not come into pit. If the top 10 come into pit, Jesper Eriksson will be the race leader. However, if they do not, it's going to be close. <laughs> Homer for... Oi! Daniel Homer coming down pit road, and that caused a great bottleneck. Lundberg, Weger. Trying to get by. Fagrel in, Nyholm in. That leaves Helmbro, Brostrom, Lundberg, Solander, Erling, and Schrepp, the only six that have not brought it down pit road just yet. 
Brostrom's going to gamble. He is well off the competitive pace. He's going to try to take it home from here. I don't, and I don't know if Helmbro has saved enough early. Helmbro needs to do enough to not lose a 23-second gap in the next seven laps. Now, that does seem like a massive amount, but Erickson is eating into that gap to the tune of about a second and a half a lap. Still going to leave Erickson well short. But Erickson now moving through this field as Helmbro trying to do what he can. He's running running well away from Linus Brostrom, who's now two and a half seconds off of the race lead. Yeah, Brostrom is even more off pace than Helmbro is because he's he's really trying to limp that car home, not having to take another pit stop. If we stay green, this is going to be a nail biter, folks. Helmbro's a full second, a full half a second quicker right now. Then Linus Brostrom caution is out. Is. Can't quite see who it is just yet, but the caution has come out, and that was the last thing that Peter Helmbro wanted to see. Last thing anyone in the top 10 really wanted to see, except for Jesper Eriksson, who will now be gifted the race lead. Gifted the race lead, meaning he was about 18 seconds off with no shot of catching up. Unless everyone in front of him pit. So not, not saying he doesn't deserve to be in the lead. He certainly deserves it with how he's run today. I'm sure Peter Helmbro in agony right now over that caution. And Tony, have you found it? I'm still looking and I don't see it. So Peter Helmbro will lead the top four onto pit road. Robert Erling a little ways behind. He will come down pit road. So will Dennis Schrepp in the 48. Pontus Nilsson I'm sure will be coming down pit road as well in the 19. He was in 10th. He had already gotten past by Hammerstead and by Solo. And that will promote Jesper Eriksson to the lead of this race. Well, Frank, unfortunately, I don't have it. I, I, I cannot find it. So a caution for a incident. Somebody threw a shoe on track. I'll bet there you. It is. Now there was an issue with the nine of Thomas P uh, Peterson was coming out of pit road at that time. I'm going to take a guess here. I'm going to say it was Daniel Holmer. We're going to look here. It's the incident just before the caution. There's Holmer going after F Jonas Fors in turns one and two. Nope, it wasn't him. The caution came out. Not quite sure who was backwards, around. I'm looking. I'm cycling through the Alard field right looks now. looks fine. Uh, Uman got into the uh, turn two wall, but it doesn't look it like anything major. We'll see it yeah. again here. Zenton Ermon getting into the fence out of two. And it was a kiss. Oh, I found it. Who was it? Uh, hold on, I can tell you. The 13 of uh, Daniel Dan Solo. Solo, 74, 
of uh, Sam Hammerstadt got into it going into three. Oh, yep, there it is. And the reason why it didn't register is because it was so quick. He turned him sideways enough to register the caution on iRacing, but he was pushed essentially right straight again. That's why we didn't see anyone tumble down the order. That's why we didn't see a, an incident. But again, here it is. Hammerstedt and Solo going into turn three. Hammerstedt thought he saw a little bit of room. Solo closed it off and turned him sideways enough for the caution to be called. And so that now... Puts us into overtime. Oh, it's, it's a natural green-white check. No, it's, no oh. it's not. It's, oh, no, you're right. You're right. It is listed as the first attempt. First of three attempts at a green-white checker finish. Initial race distance on 165 laps. This might have to be extended here because these guys are taking quite a while to get the wave around. So it'll be Ericsson and Hammerstedt in the front row. Solo and Gunnarsson, row two. Fours lockout, Alcantech lockout. With Alexander Weigert looking to play uh, spoiler for those team finishes as he's currently restarting in sixth. For the first time, and Gunnarsson restart is up. Erickson gets a good jump. For Gunnarsson, first time back in the top five since about lap 100. Three wide for second. Side by side, Gunnarsson just about as Hammerstead oh. makes contact with Solo around in the back. That's the 77 of Helmbro. Caution is out. Helmbro getting pushed down the back stretch by the 18 of Eric Lumberg and that is uh, that is restart one done and dusted not sure exactly what popped that off but there was three wide going on right, we'll see from above oh okay Hammerstead and Solo really Pushing their luck coming out of turn two. This is going into three. On the previous lap, Gunnarsson falls away. Uh, actually, I don't think this was... Oh, no, this was prior to, pardon me. Here we go. Here's the restart. The 74 of Gunnarsson on the out of uh, 74 of Hammerstedt now into the middle. Gunnarsson to the bottom. Solo on the top where he's been. A little bit of contact between the 33 and the 74. And then just beyond that, the 18 and 77 pretty much do the exact same thing. Well, from the looks of it, the 77 was pinching up to try to block off the 18. And the 18 was a little closer than 77 thought yeah. he was. We've seen a lot of instances like that tonight. Won't be seeing those instances a lot over the next three weeks with this series. GT3 Racing returns for round three of the season. They will be at Mount Panorama coming up this Thursday night. Uh, coming up next Thursday, pardon me. Thursday after that will be round number three of the cup season. That will be at Sonoma. And then GT3's return, that will be at Imola for the halfway point of the GT3 season in three weeks' time. So a lot of road racing coming up over the next couple of weeks. Again, we'd like to thank everyone in the 
YouTube and in the Twitch chats as well. And Mark Mac Sagman checking in over there saying Alcantec versus Fours as usual. And uh, Maca74 in the Twitch chat. It's it pretty much, Tony, uh, either going to be a wreck fest or another hell of a finish. True story. Uh, my money is a combination of both. Yeah. So we've had a lot go on over the course of this race today. It has been quite a uh, quite a night here. A lot far. more aggression than I was expecting tonight. Yeah. I wouldn't even say it was more aggression. It's been just a lot of it was a lot of just filling the gap. There's a yeah. gap, take it. Yeah. We haven't really seen too much that was like over aggression, like shoving someone out of the way to get a line. It's just been filling the gap. Yeah. That's what's yeah, it done is. it tonight. I think part of it stems back to, I, I think, if I heard correctly, Linus uh, did a stream of uh, Days of Thunder for everybody prior to this race going live. And Well, there's your that, inspiration. That, <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's, no. Rubbing is not racing, thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> two Chevys on the low side, two Volvos on the top shelf. As the lights are out on the pace cars, we get ready to turn them loose for attempt number two at a green-white checker. If so we get one more crack at this after. If the caution comes out before the white flag is taken, we will do this again. And then after the next attempt, whatever flag is thrown, whether it be yellow, white, or checkered, will end the race. Jesper Eriksson on the inside yet again. Getting the restart with his Force Esports teammate. Sam Hammerstedt behind him. Daniel Solo has his Alcantech teammate, Jonas Gunnarsson, behind him. Pace truck is off. Tony, green flag getting back in the air. Geico restart zone is there. Green flag back out. As we do take the green, Erickson getting a decent getaway. Solo kind of stacked up that outside lane. Oh, my goodness. Jonas Gunderson, you're in trouble. Athletason to the inside line, pinching again, coming out of turn two. Into the wall goes Gunderson, and around goes the 81 of Athletason. Caution comes out again, a hard hit for Hammerstead to the inside wall. Oy vey. Yeah, Hammerstadt just got swallowed. Same exact incident that we saw just a moment ago on the last restart happens again. Back at the front of the field. And coming on the restart, you mentioned Gunnarsson a little bit of a moment. He was strapped on the high side there. Yeah, he was. But uh, Hammerstadt, you know, we talk about the meat in the sandwich. Hammerstadt was... He, <laughs> yeah, he personified that right here. Yeah, it was more, more like a pressed pierogi. See it, we'll see it again here as the caution comes out. Half Lidison. Just a half Lidison was off of it too. Here's Hammerstead hard into the inside wall. And Hammerstead has broken the suspension on that car. Yep, and so gone as well. Race over for the 32. the position he fell to is 37 uh, now fall into 34 the 74 unit yeah i'm sorry right, you're good it's been a long day folks so hammerstead 
done for the race. He's not officially being listed as out, and as you just saw, he's still in the session, but that's a 30-minute repair, at least for the engine. That's not counting the... 15 to replace the suspension. Yeah, exactly. That's not counting the suspension repair and the, the body repair. So he is effectively done for the race now. So your, your top 10 is the currently set. Jasper Erickson, uh, Daniel Solo, Giannis Gunderson, Alexander, uh, Andre Salander, Alexander Weigert, Linus Brostrom, Tony Oivinen, Robert Erling, Pontius Nielsen, and Anton Ullman, uh, or Ullman rounding out your top 10. And I just received word from uh, our good friend Marcus Hagman in the... Uh, well, he, he shot me a PM saying that the Swedish letter capital O with the two unlots ab above it is pronounced with the U as in burn. So Erman. Erman. I've been saying it, yes. I might have been putting a little bit of an ER Erman. So Erman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you, Marcus, for helping us with our Swedish lesson. Thank you, there. We're uh, definitely looking forward to learning a little more Swedish other than meatball um, <laughs> coming up here for the remainder of the season. So Jesper Eriksson will have to do it one more time. Get another good restart, and this time he has three Alcantec cars behind him and one bright esports car behind him in the top five. Does it that, but the bright esports car uh, has been strong all night. Mm -hmm. Winner of the stage at the end of lap 58, coming a couple laps early. The 58 of Kim Nyholm lining up in 24th for this restart, the winner of the sprint race prior to this. Your biggest mover right now is the 19 of Pontius Nilsson, uh, currently sitting plus 27, Frank. Running in 10th, that number 19. 82 of Robert Erling up there as well. Currently running in 6. Daniel Solo is plus 16 on the day. Daniel Bloomquist plus 20. So now, Tony, this the end is nigh here um <laughs> green flag is going to come out next flag ends it yep whether it be the caution or the white the race will be over and i know right now everybody's hoping that this thing stays green but everybody is going to be uber aggressive right now as the field works its way out of turn number four pace truck peels it on off to take it pit side erickson has the button one more time what is he going to do on the restart? Waste no time jumping on the loud pedal. We are back underway. Frank Green Flag is out. Two to go. Yep, middle of the line. And there it is. Yep, caution is out in the back. Trying to trying to find who it was. Philip Bjork. As Bjork. Try to see what happened to him on this restart. But we knew it was coming. You saw a little bit, if you were paying attention, you saw a little bit of a, a jumble up in the midfield on that restart. There's the 044 on the outside line, and there's the jumble up and just didn't check up. Around goes the 585, and that's, that's what will do it. So for the first time this season... Jesper Eriksson was leading the race. Coming out of turn four at Daytona just two weeks ago, looking to take the season opening win. Ends up finishing four one thousandths of a second off of the race lead in third. He will come out of turn three and four here today. 
under caution, but a race winner. Jesper Eriksson will cross the line. He will win the Karlskoga Self-Storage 400 at Kansas. Win and third place, not a bad way to start the season. What a, what a race we just saw here tonight, Frank. Um, you know, it, there was a lot of uh, technical driving going on. There was a lot of good racing going on, especially when we had that. We finally got that long green flag run. Some of the best racing I ever remember seeing here uh, in Kansas, but mired with a lot of early cautions. Absolutely is get these guys up here in just a moment as Erickson takes the race win second place today will go to the 13 of Daniel Solo who I'm sure is not happy to have not had a chance at getting out in the race uh, getting out for the race win is there we see the Alcan Tech cars line astern all down into pit road. Jonas Gunnarsson comes home in third. Andre Salander, P4. Alexander Weggert comes home in P5. As Jesper Eriksson takes the win. Found himself in the right place at the right time, and that caution with six laps to go was a huge benefit to this 37 today. It, it absolutely was. Um, you know, he was in the right place at the right time. You know, we saw him have a good run at Daytona. Had the, the race lead stolen from him in the last quarter mile of that track, uh, the exit of four to the, to the tri-oval, and was able to hold on, was able to time his restarts, just right in the closing laps here with control and catch uh, the rest of the field a little bit of sleep at the switch able to hold on though for the victory here as unfortunately well, we'll, uh, we'll bring him in right now Tony you are with our race winner Jesper Erickson Jasper Erickson uh, didn't get the finish you wanted at Daytona but sure as heck Made sure you got that finish you wanted here tonight at Kansas. Congratulations, sir. Thank you so much. This is... I never thought I would win this race. Never. After the the stage, I was dead last, damaged everything. I was like, eh, maybe top 10 is good enough. And Oh, here I am. I am so delighted. I am my first win. I can't... Oh, I'm about to cry. <laughs> Understandable, sir. You had a great run here tonight. Uh, reco great recovery drive, too, by the way, sir. Uh, but, Jasper, just you kept plugging away at it, kept plugging away at it. And in the closing laps, you had to be sweating bullets knowing that, you know, you had those those other guys right there breathing down your neck and it, no real, uh, you, you know, teammates around you in especially in the last two restarts i i could feel my heart pounding through my chest i i have never felt it beat that hard or that fast it was uh i was so nervous i just i just couldn't focus all only thing i knew was go early and see what happens just push through don't care about the tires that's exactly the the attitude you need to have. Now, uh, next week we're back in the GT3 car. We're going to Mount Panorama. What are your thoughts going into Bathurst? Uh, it's a track that I'm not really good at. I have not have a good racing career there, you could say. And it's a track that I, I like it, but I'm not good at it, you can say. And the one-hour race, I, we shall see how it goes. All right, Jasper, again, congratulations on the win here tonight. Finally getting that monkey off your back, getting a win here in the cup car. 
who do you need to thank before we let you go celebrate this team with your victory, or celebrate this victory with your team? Uh, first of all, our, all of our sponsors, uh, Malbihir Bilar, uh, Kappa Bar, all of the people that has helped us come this far, and all of my teammates, Linus, uh, Sam, Jonas, uh, just everyone has done a great effort all week, practicing, practicing. We have high, high hopes going into the race, and we finish on a high note, I think. Well, Jasper, congratulations to you and the entirety of Forza Esports for coming home with the victory tonight. We will see you next week in uh, Australia. We sure will. And Frank, I believe you've got the man. Um, yeah, there he goes. I believe you've got the man that uh, came up just a tick short here tonight with him, with you now. Yep, that I believe I do. Our second place finisher tonight, Daniel Solo. Daniel. Uh, unfortunate that you couldn't get a crack at him there on that uh, that final restart with the caution coming out so quick. Yeah, I um, I don't know if I had the pace, but I would have liked to given it a shot. I, f I felt like I could have done something there. Um, I was doing pretty good before that last caution after the long run came out as well, but, you know, stuff happens. But a P2 and a P3 and a P4 for the team is really good. So, it is what it is. I think we could have gotten the W here pretty easy, but... Yeah, the, your Alcantech team was certainly swarming in that top five the entirety of the race. What was it about that outside line that you had found? Now, we know the progressive banking around here, the outside line has the most banking, but with the with the changes that iRacing have made over the last couple of major updates it's made it to where more the inside line was the more dominant line. What did you find on that outside line that would allow you to run up there as quickly as you were for as long as you were? I don't know. Just speed, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it seemed to have been killing my tires pretty pretty much, though. Like I, um, I could hold on, but as soon as a few laps in a stint, then I was basically gone. But I, I, I'm feeling good up top here. I, I love it. So... You certainly looked as though you were enjoying yourself. Uh, we head next week back into the GT3 cars for round three of the season. That will be at Mount Panorama. What are your thoughts going into uh, one of the more legendary racetracks this world has to offer? Uh, well, you lost me at GT3. I'll say that much. <laughs> okay, so uh, next next round for this series will be at Sonoma in two weeks' time. What are your thoughts going there? Um, gonna need a lot of practice for sure. I don't, I haven't ran in all my ages, but I think uh, we should be able to do pretty well there too. So hopefully another top five, I would hope. All right, anybody you want to thank before we let you go? Uh, all my guys in Alcan Tech and Alcan Tech itself and Alme Tech, Neiman Racing, as well as SimLab. All right, your second place finisher tonight, Daniel Solo, bud, congratulations. Right, and that will now bring our third place driver in to have a chat with Tony. That would be Jonas Gunnarsson, who with about halfway through this race found himself mired deep in the field and made an appearance late. Tony is with Jonas right now. Jonas, you were able to recover from uh, some early issues and, and come home on the podium. Uh, all in all, can't be too disappointed in that tonight. Nah, it... It was the same as the last race at lap 100 there, I think, was I was uh, at last place. Uh, so it was a recovery drive then and now. But, uh, yeah, overall happy with P3. Well, you definitely had some speed in that, uh, in your 33 tonight. Talk us through just how difficult it could be at times to pick your way through traffic. Yeah, it was really hard to go through some of the traffic when you were on old tires and they were on old tires. So I think after 30 laps or so, uh, everybody had the same pace in, P in top 10. So it was hard to do something. Then the yellows came out and I tried to undercut before that. So gained a couple of places and gained a couple of places in the restart. So yeah, P3, happy. Understandable. Uh, now, 
do you think you had anything for Jasper if we had stayed green? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so much pace in my car tonight. But I think uh, maybe Andre Lander in P4 maybe have got the W if uh, we stayed green for three laps. I don't know. Well, Jonas, uh, we go back to the GT3 division next week as we roll into Mount Panorama uh, down, yeah, down in uh, Australia. What are your thoughts going into that historic course? Yeah, yeah, I think it's the best course on iRacing. But, uh, yeah, the Forge team has been uh, really good at road courses. So, <laughs> yeah, it's no, uh, I'm not surprised if they are P125, something like that. But, hey, maybe we can do something against them. I don't know. Jonas, one final question for you. Um, we know a lot of road racers don't normally run with the spotter on. Do you think that would, may have been the case here tonight with all the cautions that we saw? Uh, I have no idea. I hope they have spotters on. <laughs> Fair enough, sir. We're going to let you go celebrate this podium with your team. Who do you need to thank before we turn you loose? Yeah, I want to thank everybody in the team and everybody who makes this uh, league and you guys. And uh, all my tech and Newman Racing. I think that's everybody. All right. Jonas, again, congratulations. Best of luck to you next week at Mount Panorama. We will see you then, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. And Frank, that puts another one in the books. Yep, that will do it for another race. And, and we we kind of did our dissection there going to the final, the final green flag. It was a, a great race. A lot of guys, again, just trying to fill gaps. And towards the end there, we saw a lot of, of wild racing, pushing and shoving, and unfortunately couldn't get this race to finish under green, Tony, but certainly a, a certainly a great time to be had. Oh, very much so. Um, you know, and, and it, <laughs> congratulations to Jasper Erickson. I mean, you could hear the emotion in his voice. Um, you know, just he got one stolen from him la uh, two weeks ago. Able to come home on the top step of the podium here at Kansas. Um, and, and you know as well as I do, Frank, this track is not easy to get around at, at a quick pace, especially when you have the long green flag run like we did there in the mid-race. Yeah, absolutely. It's It can become quite a difficult racetrack uh, over the course of the race, but these guys handled it certainly well we'll take a look at the final results here for tonight's race Jesper Eriksson, Daniel Solo and Jonas Gunnarsson we've heard from those three already your top three finishers Andre Salander and Alexander Weigert come home in the top five positions Linus Brostrom, Tony Oivan and Robert Erling, Pontus Nielsen and Anton Irman uh, rounding out the top ten Daniel Holmer, Dennis Schrepp, Stefan Wong and uh, Daniel Bloomquist and Jonas Skoglund rounding out the top 15. Uh, Michael Hefleidison, uh, Hyokan Wett, Antoine Bratberg, Connie London, and Jonas Fors rounding out the top 20. Peter Helmbro, Eric Lundberg, Bjorn Brostrom, Kim Nyholm, and Emily Fagrell rounding out a little bit more than the top half of your field. Yeah, 25 cars finishing on the lead lap. Uh, have Lidas Jonasson, uh, are you... Would you like me? To... <laughs> I'm just, I closed out SDK, unfortunately. Okay. Have Lidas Johansson coming home in the 26th position. Ricard Allard, Marcus Stiller, Patrick Pfeffer, Christian Gantz rounding out the top 30. Philip Bjork, Robert Erickson, Thomas Peterson, Philip Carlin. And Simon Green up to the 35th position. Uh, Bat Erdine Ganbat, Sam uh, Sam Hammerstead, Marcus Stromberg, Marcus uh, Martin, pardon me, Godlakis, uh, Martin Lieznich, see, Google did during the interviews, Kenneth Tier, Robert Rung Lundgren, and uh, Oscar Fredrickson rounding out the field here for tonight's race really quick we'll take a look back as well 
at the final results here for the heat race. Kim Nightholm taking home the race win in the sprint race after qualifying in the 21st position. This is how the guys started for the fine, uh, for the main race. And uh, Christopher Horn, uh, Kornbach not uh, making it into the race here tonight. Coming up here on Sim Racing Media a little bit later on tonight will be Fuel, the East, the uh, Fired Up Esports League. They will be at um, they will be at Las Vegas for round number three of the season. That will be a 7:15 p.m. Eastern time start, uh, and then the nightcap of the three races here today on SRM will be uh, Sim Racers Edge. They will be at Richmond at 8:10 p.m. Eastern time. It will be uh, Dave Regal and Greg McConey taking you through that race. Uh, round number four for the Circle B Diecast Super Speedway Series will be at the iRacing Super Speedway back in the Xfinity cars. Uh, and the Monsters of Speed New Gen Cup Series will be at Bristol for round number six of their season. Both of those races tomorrow. Both of those races starting at 8.20 p.m. Eastern time. And then a double dip on Sunday. No racing on Saturday, but we do have Sunday the ISNF Cup Series and Sunday Night NASCAR will both be at Bristol Motor Speedway coming up this Sunday with ISNF starting just a couple of ticks before 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. So for my broadcast partner, Tony Trapasso, I am Frank Marchese. Thank you very much for making us a part of your evening. We will see you all next week back in the GT3 cars once again at Mount Panorama. Good night, everybody.